Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs. Today we're completing day six of the advent of the cyber challenge. We are on day six and we'll be going up to day 25. And our story says here, during a routine security audit before an incident, Max Kiri discovered some recovery passwords on an old server. She created tickets to decommission this server to reduce security vulnerability. Then the elf assigned to fix this vulnerability kept pushing off the task and this never got done. So likely some of these recovery keys can be used to save some of the system. So unfortunately, the only way to access the server is through the old web application. See if you can pull out these recovery keys to help my kitty with her pursuit to save Christmas. So we're going to do this to try to local file inclusion to recover some keys. All right, so if you're curious, what is local file inclusion? It's pretty much a vulnerability that allows an attacker to read files from the system. There could be log files, there could just be uh, files, configuration files with passwords, even local files like AC password. And I highly encourage you to spend some time reading th through this and also complete this room here if you can, here the local file inclusion room. I learned a lot from this room when I completed it and I highly encourage you to do so. So I'm not going to read through all this, but we'll get started right away. Here it says deploy the attached VM and look around for an entry in the application. So we need to fuzz through this application. We need to find out, okay, how does local file inclusion work in this application? So, so far, it looks like we deployed, I deployed the machine by clicking the start button. Then next, how do we access that machine? So we already have, it's part of our URL here. You can see that we already have an IP address. So this is what I'll just visit. And if you follow along with the instructions, it will work. You can use the attack box here, or you can use the VPN. I'm using TriHackMe VPN because I like to use my own machine. So this is my own Kali Linux connected to TriHackMe VPN. So I would do that because it's easier for me. But if we just access the website, let's hope it works. It looks like we get an error here error.txt. So right away, the parameter that we're going to use for local file inclusion is going to be this error here. That's our entry point. And so we'll say error and submit. That works. And you might be curious why I am saying it's the error because this is what we're going to be fuzzing for local file inclusion. After the index.php, you see a question mark. Anything that is out here, it could be ID, command. In this time, it's just error dot equals to error dot text. So that was the first one. Next, use the entry point to perform LFI to read Etsy flag file. What is the flag? Okay, so with LFI, I do have some resources that you can use. Let me share with you here. LFI wait list that you can use with web suite. So here are a list of things that you can use to brute force to see which of these you can access. This time we're told, but I highly encourage you to have this wait list. You can use Burp Suite with this and Burp Suite will find things for you. Use the LFI to read Etsy flag. So with LFI, especially in situations like this where it's easy, we can just start doing something like this. Dot dot one. We're trying to through the file systems and see if we can read something. And the easiest one is the Etsy password or Etsy shadow. So you can do one like this, pass WD, because we know pass password exists. And you can hit enter. And you can now start trying until you see the files that you're looking for. So you keep adding here. You can, you can use burp to test using this, but sometimes doing it by hand a few times. I do it up to like seven or eight. And if I don't see anything, then I start using tools. But if it's there, most of the time you're able to see it after trying a few times here. All right. So as you can see here, after putting about eight of them, I'm able to read Etsy password because I was going through the file system, going down one directory until I'm able to read. So this is the contents of the Etsy password. We can actually tell what kind of users are there. If you want to see this in a nice way, I would I encourage you to view it in page source. This will actually render it properly like this. Okay, so we see Etsy password, which is what you usually use for testing. 
But here they're saying Etsy flag. So let's just open it. Replace password with flag. All right. And we see a flag right here. So that was an easy local file inclusion. Every time you have local file inclusion, once you find the parameter that you are doing, you're going after. This time we were given the error. Usually you have to fuzz for that. Then you can just find it the way we just did here. All right. Use the PHP filter technique to read the source code index.php. So with the PHP filter, you can use the information given in this room. Or if you go here in Hectrix, right here. So here it says page. We're just going to use the second one here. Uh, we like base64. You can use others, but for me, base64 almost always works. Most of the time, at least. <laughs> So um, I'll use that PHP filter. So instead of this LC password, let's just go ahead and put that PHP filter. It will give us base64 encode, and the resource is also indexed with PHP. Hit enter. So we get a base64 encoded text. Let's view the page source. It's very long, so we need to decode this. All right, so let me just decode it here. I'll just echo. That whole string is going to be ugly, but it work. Then I'll pass pipe it to base64 minus D. Then I would like this to be index to PHP. Was it's a very long string. All right, it's base64 without a space. <laughs> okay, now catch index dot PHP. Here is the PHP file that's rendered. So I decoded it. And here it says flag is equals to this. So that's our new flag now. All right. After that, it says that now that we have the contents of index.php, we need to read uh, using the same PHP filter, the username and password. If you go back to our HTML here that we just decoded, it says includes this directory here, creds.php. So we're going to use the same technique that we just did here to go back here. And instead of index.php, we're going to include the one that we're given. All right. So now we have this base64 encoded here. Let's decode this again using the same way echo then pipe that to base 64 minus d and then i would like this to be creds dot txt that way we have them saved as well all right cat creds dot txt the user is this one and the password is this so what are we looking for here or oh, they just want that in the same format now that's good Use the credentials to log into the web application. Help my security recover the server's password. What is the password of that server? Of the server. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign in. Opening this here. So we have an error, but it says you cannot access this page. You need to log in. So let's click on login. It wants a username and password, and we do have the username here and the password. All right, so we are in, and it says, note that from syscontrol, access the web app is limited. To recover the system's password, password recovery, log access, log out. So what are we being asked here? So we need to recover the password. So we just click on the password recovery. And sure enough, we get a flag. So we get the password, we submit it up here. with you okay so it says to use lfi to gain remote code execution via log file so we just need to be able to run log, log execution then find the host name so to do that in our um, cheat sheet here this is payloads all things by the way it's just a different version of it the web shell http user agent log poisoning you can use this as a cheat sheet there is a better explanation here but the idea here is if you send a curl command you can put in the user agent p 
PHP code that allows you to do this. And then, of course, you need to point to your website, then the log file that you are after here. So I'm going to reuse this and point it to our website. So everything is going to be the same except for this section here because it's, it has to be very specific to our website. So let's go back to Kali. So this is LFI log poisoning. So I'll do a clear here. And if you modify that command, I'll show you what it will look, the final thing will look like. You end up with your curl minus S. Then um, you set your user agent here. This is the PHP code that will allow you to have code execution on the website right here. Then, of course, the website that we're going to, up, or they were up to index.php, then the error equals to index.php here. I just left it the same way. So payload all things will have this for you. And if you have not done this, I highly encourage you to read a few things, including um, from Hectrix. I also found other articles as well that will really help you with, with going from local file inclusion to getting a reverse shell, for example, this article here. But today, we just have to accomplish our task. So let's go and see what we can do. Before we run this curl command here, let's go and check our logs, make sure that we can read the logs. Okay, so if we go in the URL, error equals to, we just need to put the path to the log file. According to this here, this log file is in the working directory, so dot, then the full path, the path to the name of the log file here. So we'll copy that, remove everything that we had put, like the Etsy password. Remember, the Etsy password was working. So we started here, and we can see Etsy password. Now we just need to replace all this here with the log file, just like that. And we can see that we can read the log file here. It's not as interesting to read, when it's like this, so you want to right click and view page source. And here is our log file, all the way at the bottom here. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and run this curl command. This curl command is going to send the user agent with this PHP code here. If you want to test this before you send the user agent, you can do what they showed you here in the instructions, where you can send a, a curl command and things like that. But for now, I'm just going to go straight to what we need to do. If I hit enter, I will get this here. But let's go and check my log file. I like to refresh the one where I'm viewing page source. All the way at the bottom, it says, warning, uh, we could not execute a blank command. So we know our code execution works because we put it out there. So all we need to do now is go back to here. If you do something like and cmd equals to who am I, we should see www data show up in our log file. So let's refresh our log file. www data should be somewhere in there if our command ran. And sometimes it's hard to see. right here. So we know we are now able to run the command. What do they want us to do? They want us to find the host name. So we just replace who am I with host name. No, we need to do it right here. Replace who am I with host name. And if we view this page source so that it's easier to see, this is actually easier in Burp Suite. And we see that we have the host name right here. This string here, that's the host name. It was kind of hard to see at first, but when you go back to try hack me, you see that it's a very long host name. So that's how I was able to identify it from all that noise. And hit submit. And then we can hit complete. So we have officially completed the challenge. We can take it further and try to get a reverse shell, which will be easier. So instead of this command here, we can now try to run, say, a netcat command. But before I run netcat, let me see if we actually have netcat on the system. I can say, which netcat? Do I have netcat? And can I do that? 
view a page source. I should have a path to netcat somewhere. So just go ahead and type which Python. Let's use Python instead. And it looks like we do have Python. We have user bin Python. So let's use a Python reverse shell to see if we can get a reverse shell here. I'll just use this one here. All right. So for now, let me make sure that this command makes sense. All right. I need to change my IP address here first. That will be my Kali Linux IP address, the tunnel IP. So it's IPA, this one. If you're using the attack box, that's the attack box IP. 443, that's fine. I'm going to leave it to that and it'll give me bin bash. So with that, we just need to go and start a listener. Netcat minus LV and P on 443. And then go here. Instead of which with which netcat or which Python, I just press the whole thing. And I'm listening on 443. If everything works, I should get my reverse shell back. And it's hanging. That's good. Let's see. Moment of truth. Ah, it failed. But you can see here it tried. So I just have some syntax problems somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to try this Python here. It's a different variation of the Python that's up here, but we should get to the same place. This time we, instead of PTY, we're using something different. So let's see. First, our listener now changed to 4242. All right. And then we go here. We say the command is that all oh, that Python and it should hang and that's good and we're in all right so to get a reverse show all we need to do is what we did is we went to payload all things we copied this and once we copy that we went to our notes here and we replaced the ip address with your tunnel IP address or your Kali Linux IP address. Then we copy this whole thing here. Go back to our command. Replace the commands that we're putting here with the Python. And once you hit enter with netcat listening on 4242, we're in. So we can do a who am I or ID ls. And we can actually interact with this host name, which is what we're after. And this is the host name. So that was a really fun challenge. Thanks for joining me. Otherwise, please subscribe, like, and follow me. We will be doing all 25 challenges. And I hope we will learn a lot of things. Otherwise, thanks for being here. And I'll see you next time.